Thank you for joining in with us tonight for our midweek service. As you know, Sunday we celebrated Palm Sunday, and the Lord was in our service and moved and challenged us. And this coming Friday will be the beginning of the consideration of what's taking place before the Easter. Before the Easter, there has to be the time of crucifixion, the time of dying out, of surrender. Good Friday, as we call it. And I ministered on Sunday about Good Friday. And I made the statement that if you don't appreciate, and have not moved and broken by the events that took place on what we call Good Friday, um, you won't appreciate and understand and reap the benefits of the Sunday morning resurrection. I want to look at some verses of scripture tonight and ask you this question because when we look at the when we look at the world, we look at the church world, we look at the atmosphere within the body of Christ. If we'll be honest tonight, and I'm gonna kind of take my time a little bit because I want to make an impact to challenge you. If we'll be honest tonight, the atmosphere in most churches is nominal. There's no zeal and unction. There's no determination to reach to a higher plane and touch God in a greater manner. There's no thirst to know him in ways that we've never known him and understand him. For God to draw nigh us because we've drawn nigh to him. It's seemingly when you look around and you watch and you listen and you observe, and even the scripture foretells it, that in the last days the love of many shall wax cold. That they'll be falling away. It lets us know the word of God that when he comes back, he even asks the question, shall I find faith? We know that these are perilous times. Given he to seduce the spirits and doctrines of devils and we're, we're allowing our flesh to rule instead of the spiritual man. We don't want to stay on the straight and narrow. And we find ourselves in such a quagmire because we're battling the flesh against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. But seemingly, it appears that maybe we might be losing the battle. We can't. We cannot. I can't stress that enough. We cannot lose this battle because it will determine your destiny. And if you lose the battle of the flesh, your destiny will be hell. It will be damnation. But listen, this flesh must be crucified, sanctified for the glory of God. There's got to be a hunger and a, and, and a, and a desire to go on a quest to be more like him, to be the image of him, the reflection of Christ, to let the light of the love of God flow through you and out of you and impact a world that was that is lost like you once was. So in essence, what I'm saying is that and I'm talking to the church. I'm not talking to the unbeliever. I'm not talking to the to the uh, you know the, the person who who uh, will admit that they're an unbeliever, a sinner, a heathen. I'm talking about those that once have been tasted and been blessed by the move and the power of the Spirit of God, been redeemed, redeemed and their name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. They knew the love of the God, the peace of God. They understood what it was to have God reach down and touch them and have their name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want us to look at this verse of Scripture, three different places. And my question is, how many of God's people have laid their crosses down? How many have just laid their crosses down I know that the cross, when Jesus was carried it through the streets of Jerusalem, it was a sign of shame. It was a, it was a, a sign, it was an a, a advertisement that you were worse than a dog, that you were going to die a death that a dog wouldn't even want to die. That you were cursed by God because you were going to hang on a tree. You was humiliated to the biggest uh, uh, degree and People would jeer at you and mock you. There was no compassion, no understanding, no caring. And with that shame, Jesus carried that cross. But from resurrection, from that Sunday morning, the cross shouldn't be a sign of shame anymore. It ought to be a remembrance of victory. Hallelujah. Victory over death. Victory over the enemy. Victory over flesh. Victory over self-will. Victory over rebellion. 
Victory is the fact that we can give our whole heart to God and he can change us and transform us. It ought to be a reminder that God paid a price and because he did, because he was resurrected, we're going to be resurrected. Every time you see a cross, it ought to remind you that when you buried a loved one and they died in Christ, there's going to be a meeting day. Hallelujah. We shall see one another again. We'll be joined together in the air to be with the Lord. And when we are, there'll be no more tears and sorrows and sickness. It's a reminder that there's a heaven, a place prepared by God for you and I. And God's word is true. So I want to look at some verses of scripture today, and I want you to ponder. I want you to think sincerely. Am I carrying my cross? Have I found myself to be embarrassed, ashamed, withdrawn? from the shadow of the cross, from the, you know, the, the, the um, attention and, 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 and the, the uh, understanding of, of uh, agreement with the cross. Follow with me, if you will, in Luke, the 14th chapter, 25th verse. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and his children and brothers and sisters, yea, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower, sit it down for, not first, and count it the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, and all that he beholdeth, they begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassage and desire conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt hath lost his savior, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dumb hill, but men cast it out. He that hath the ears, let him to hear. He that have ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus is telling you, count the cost. Consider what it is to be a child of God. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Not just a follower, but a disciple of Jesus Christ. One who wants to imitate. One who wants to be a replica. One who wants the flow of the relationship and intimacy to be recognized in him. Have you first stopped and counted the cost and considered what it is to be and have that honor of being called the sons of God? And then I want you to look at me in Matthew, the 10th chapter. Look over there at the 10th chapter, at the 38th verse. One verse scripture. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross, your cross, not somebody else's, but every one of us have a cross to bear. Taketh not his cross and follow after me, he is not worthy of me. Then go over there to Matthew, the 16th chapter, 24th verse. And this is what Jesus said in the 24th verse. Then said Jesus unto the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is it profit of a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? But what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So I want to minister for a short while tonight on the question, are you still carrying your cross? Have you laid it down? Have you allowed yourself to be overwhelmed? Have you been blinded? Have you gotten to the point that you haven't understood and comprehended that you must bear this cross for the sake of Christ and the kingdom of God, that others can see Jesus in you. Father, have your will tonight. I know we're going into this season of Easter, which is the greatest event in the history of humanity. Without the resurrection of the Son of God, we'd all be yet in our sins and miserable. I know where the hell, 
unreconcilable to the Father above. But we praise you because we know that that resurrection morning took place and it's effective and dynamic. But before it ever came about, there had to be a cross to bear. There had to be a dying. There had to be a giving of oneself. There had to be total surrender. There had to be, my God, Jesus, surrendering and forsaking all and being totally submissive and obedient to your divine will. Lord, let us learn from this and let us be more like you, that we can impact the world and see a change in them. And for it is done and said, we'll give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to give you this little poem, Calvary. They led him away to Golgotha that day, the place of the skull, the Bible does say. When they were there, they gave him a drink of vinegar and gall to our Jesus. Just think. On the cross, they did place him in the roughest of the way. But Father, forgive them, is all that he did say. And there they did leave him, all battered and torn, to cast lots for garments which Jesus had worn. And when look at the palm, they watched him hang there, and they gave him the ghost in pain and despair. Then blackness came over and covered the earth, thus started the plan for a spiritual new birth. In the tomb they did place him with a seal at the door, but little did they know he'd reign forevermore. At the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, they, they came forth to see where Jesus did lay. There an angel descended with a mighty earthquake. The keepers were frightened with fear they did shake. The angel went over and he unlocked the door. The grave then did hold the body no more. And he spoke, he, the angel, to the woman and said, I know who you seek. He's no longer dead. He's risen to life and to live forevermore. Go tell the disciples he goes before. The plan of salvation is now complete. This blessed Redeemer someday they will meet. I want us to talk about our cross. You see, there's many today who have allowed things to come into their lives. They've allowed things to blur their vision. They've allowed things to dull their senses. They've allowed uh, things of life in, in this world to deafen the hearing and the whisper of God, the intimacy of God. They've allowed things to take over. In fact, there's many that have traded their crosses for pleasures. Some have traded their crosses for possessions. And even Jesus asked the question, what shall the prophet of man be gained the whole world and loses his own soul? There's some that have traded their crosses for popularity. <clears throat> they want to be recognized. They want to see their name in bright lights. They wanted to have an opportunity for everybody to give them acclaim and just see them and be excited when they see their name and want their autograph. And they traded their cross for this this, this momentary honor that man could give them and only man could give them. But what is meant by cross bearing? What does it really mean to bear the cross of Christ? To bear your own cross? In these last days that we're living, in this culture setting that we uh, have to abide in, what does it really mean? It means that we must share in his suffering. We must share in that humility. We must stay focused on the eternal things and the things that are untangible, the things that, that, that matter to God, the things that are going to be eternal. We must focus on the things that's going to make the difference for souls to be one in the kingdom of God, that the power of God can flow and the world can recognize Christ because of our walk and our talk and our ambassadorship because we reflect Christ and we speak of him. And we do all those things that he asks us to do. Yet I want you to know there's men who's laid down their crosses because they face such pressures in these last days. The spirit of the Antichrist is overwhelming. And there's pressures from without. I mean, it's from everywhere, peer pressure and, and the culture and, the, and, and, and everything that's taking place in this day and time that we're living in. We're living in a time when, you know, they'll just eliminate you and take you out and uh, just, you know, just cross you out. We're living in a time when they don't agree with you. They'll do their best to devour, destroy you, tell lies, and, and just, just, just devour you. 
But I want you to know when the pressure is from without, you got to still maintain and lean upon God and allow God to put a, sh a shelter and a covering over you. But you can't lay down your cross. Sometimes there's pressures from within. I know there's this cancer culture, and I know there's this mindset that, you know, if you're not my way, I'll scream and holler and kick, and, and I'll get attention, and you, you'll probably surrender. And I know there's pressures from within. I know many times we might feel inadequate. Many times being the minority of walking in the straight and narrow, you, you know, you're, you're, you're mocked and made fun even by those that claim to be equal with you. I know we're living in these last days. And I understand that there's pressure from without, and I know there's pressures from within. I know that many times when these pressures build up, the weight of the cross gets much heavier. It's, it just seems like it's, it's got more dense, and the wood is soaking with the tears that you've wept to try to deal with all these pressures from the left and the right, from the world and from Satan, from the spirit of Antichrist, from those that are cold and indifferent and backslidden and lukewarm. I know the pressures are just, I know they're real. But you must stay focused and realize uh, I cannot surrender my cross for nothing or no one. I must bear my cross. You must keep in mind that if I don't bear my cross, uh, I'm not worthy to follow him. He don't have no to the line. If I don't follow, carry my cross, uh, I'm not worthy to be called a disciple of Jesus. Uh, irregardless of the consequences of the price uh, and the sacrifices, uh, you must bear your cross. Uh, at times, your cross is going to be much heavier than others. Uh, at times, it's going to seem like it's almost impossible. Uh, at times, it's going to feel like it's going to drop you to your knees. Uh, but I want to remind you, he'll put no more on you than you're able to bear. God knows where you're at, but he wants you to carry that cross. He wants you to realize that there's a price you got to pay. And when you're carrying that cross, it's not just for you. He wants you to realize that that weight of that cross and the humility and the, and the, and the uh, threats from the world, uh, listen, it's only a, a smidgen of what the world is dealing with from the powers of hell. You see, you and I are sheltered because we're hid in the blood of Christ. I abide in Christ. I'm untouchable by the powers of Satan and hell. I no longer have, he has no longer possession of me. I belong to Christ and I'm hidden in him. But to the unbeliever, to the sinner, to the backslider, he is able to put all kind of pressure and damnation. He comes against it with such horror and fear. He brings such bondages upon them. You cannot imagine the burden they carry. They might be smiling, but that's why they're shooting up. They might appear like they're being prosperous, but that's why they're getting high and drunk. It might look like they got the world by the tail, and I want you to know they know when they shut the doors and cut off the lights that their life is facing damnation and hell. They don't know the peace of God and the joy of the Lord, and they don't have the surrender, the umbrella, all oh, the covering of God. He, oh my God, I'm glad that I'm sheltered in Him. I'm glad I've got a refuge in Him. No matter what comes my way, today or tomorrow or any time, no matter what onslaught the enemy tries to bring against me, I'm glad to hallelujah, here on your Sunday, I've got a hiding place in Christ, I can abide in him, I can get under the, the umbrella, I can get under the shadow of the almighty and be safe in Christ Jesus, but the ungodly, the sinner, the backslider, they don't have that, and so that cross reminds you of just how much they have and the bear, and my God, will should make you hold down. I want you to reach out to a world that is lost and undone without God. Many have laid their crosses down because of problems with the flesh. It's our biggest enemy. It's not Satan. It's not hell. It's not the world. It's your own flesh. Paul told the church at Galatia, how the things you would do, you cannot do because of the flesh. We, we, we had to battle the same. The great apostle Paul said that his greatest fear when he preached others, that he himself would become a castle. He good for the kingdom of God. He said, I got to crucify my flesh every day. Every day I crucify this flesh. Why? Because it's your biggest enemy. It's the only way the enemy can get you to fail and succumb. He knows, the enemy knows that your flesh is your biggest enemy. And if he gets you to surrender to it, it can do what Satan and all the demons in hell cannot do. 
You're untouchable. No man can pluck you out of the Father's hand. But oh, you can forward yourself out by operating in the flesh and getting in the flesh. Because I want to remind you that flesh is a stench. It's not pleasing to God. He don't want to look upon it. He wants the blood to cover it. He wants the sweet aroma of the rose of Sharon to, uh, to mellow out the stench of the flesh and the death of it. And so many uh, many uh, have problems with the flesh. They want it to be petted. Yeah, they want to be petted with this uh, when they deal with the flesh. They don't want correction or instruction. They don't want rebuke. They don't want to, you know, uh, to be told you're wrong and you need to do this or you don't need to do that. No, they want to be petted. Because it's the flesh operating instead of yielding for the divine will of God. They want it to be petted and pampered. And they want this flesh to have recognition. But I'm telling you, Paul even let us know. He said, the things I would do, I do not do. The things I would not do, I do do. Why? Because of the battle of the flesh. And so there's many that have laid down their cross. That flesh has won the battle. That flesh has overtaken them. They surrendered to the temptations and the lust of the flesh. And I'm warning you now in these last days, as sure as Jesus is coming, you better make sure that crest of that flesh is crucified. You need to take that flesh to Calvary, your Calvary. You need to find your Golgotha, and you need to die out to the flesh and say, Lord, not my will, but thine will. Lord, I want to be pleasing and faithful in thy sight, and I want to bear my cross because I know the time is short. Oh, my God, I know there's many that have laid down their crosses. Because of the pleasures of this, of this life, it seemed so far more important and expedient that they had to have the now. They weren't looking at the eternal one. I know there's a lot of things that people have told me, you miss out on this and you miss out on that. But I want you to know I'm looking at the long term. I'm looking at the eternal. I'm not missing out on nothing. This life is but a vapor anyway. Oh, but listen, when the world tries to entertain, I've got a joy from the Lord that only he can put in. I've got a happiness that comes from my relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. No matter what tomorrow holds, I know my God knows me. Hallelujah. He reckoned in the ocean. He knows my voice. He knows my comings and goings, my uprisings and downsittings. My God, I feel him right now. He knows where I am. He knows where he's leading me. And my assurance is in him. As long as my God sits on the throne, everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. But I'm going to hang on to my cross. And I'm going to bear it. I'm not going to allow the flesh to go have a minute on me. I'm going to make sure that this world don't seem so glamorous. I'm not concerned about this life. I'm concerned about when I leave this world and I stand before God as an eternal being and soul, a spirit that my God that I can hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. There's many that have laid their crosses down because the price seemingly was too high. They was willing to forsake God because they didn't want to pay the price of what it would take. Oh, listen, there's a lot of prices sometimes. There might be the price of betrayal. You might be betrayed. You might have family and loved ones that are turning their back on you. Friends that you thought and people you used to run around with that you thought would be supportive and excited that you were coming out of that drudgery and that ungodly life, that unrighteous life, that lying and, and, and stealing and deceiving and cursing and being piled all the time. But they may betray you and they might hurt deep, but you got to carry the cross because Jesus was betrayed. Oh, listen, he was betrayed by Judas. He was betrayed by Demas. And you need to realize that even Paul said there was a time when all men forsook him. Oh, it's easy to understand that there's going to be betrayal. There's going to be those that are going to leave you by yourself. But there's one who said that'll stick closer than a brother. There's one who said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Until the ends of the world, I'm going to be right there. I'm glad no matter what happens in my life, I know I can count on my Jesus. I know I can count on my God. I know he will never turn his back on me. I know he'll be there. He's eternal and he cannot lie. And then I want you to know there's some that's laid their crosses down. 
because uh, they didn't understand them. They didn't prepare uh, and they laid them down because uh, that they had plans for the future that wasn't in line with God. Uh, oh, they, 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 they were looking at now. They weren't concerned uh, about the long term and the future. Uh, Israel uh, started out well, but something interfered. Somebody hindered them. There's some that started out, some of you started out. Uh, I was looking through an old uh, uh, directory of Enoville Church of God. I was looking through that and I've seen some of you that might be watching. When you were younger and your children were small, uh, you had that smile, that glow on you. Uh, I was just going through it. The Holy Ghost uh, just had me keep going through it. Uh, and I, I'd see uh, some of your family, you and your family. Uh, and I'd say, my God, uh, they don't even come to church tomorrow. My God, this one here don't even talk about God. Uh, my God, this one is backslid and turned his back on you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The children have gone astray. Uh, this one here is died lost. Oh God look at this and it was heartbreaking but then I look at the others that, that was glowing then and still glowing now. They were determined to hold on and carry their cross and they've never gave up. They've never buckled. They've never surrendered. They kept pressing on. Heroes is what I call them. Heroes of the faith. Hallelujah. And so I want you to realize there's some that started out but along the way they lost the vision of the future. They were lost what's around the next bend. Israel started out, but they died in the wilderness. Paul kept that vision in focus. He kept that to what was on the other side. And when he died, he was warring. He wasn't in the wilderness. Israel was died wandering. But oh, when Paul died, he was witnessing. Hallelujah. Oh, there, there's a crown laid up for me henceforth. And not only me, but all those who look for a sparing. The time of my departure is at hand, he was telling them. But he was ready to go. Hallelujah. He was warring and he was testifying and witnessing them. Israel died and they're withering them. Oh, my God, but Paul, he died worshiping and praising God. Oh, Israel died worthless. But oh, Paul, he, he said, I'm, I'm ready to lay it down. I fought the uh, fought the fight. I kept the faith up around the course. Uh, henceforth, there's letter for me a crown of righteousness. Uh, I bear my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he was declaring, I want you to realize that. Uh, that I'm ready to go. I'm ready to die. I'm not afraid. I've paid my dues. I've carried my cross to the end. My question is, where will you be? Where will you be when you die? Where will you be when the trump of God sounds? When the rapture takes place, that can happen at any moment, at any second from this moment right now. Where will you be? Where will your, fat, your wife and children be? Where will your husband and your children be? Where will your mom and dad be? Where will your grandchildren be? Oh, my God, it's a question that you need to ask yourself and be very sober about. Them. Where am I going to end up in eternity? Have I carried my cross? Have I carried it now? Those of you that want to do the power of God and the glory of God. I'm, I'm crying out to you and telling you, uh, go back to go back, uh, go back to the foot of the cross uh, and cry out and say, oh Lord, uh, remember thou hast me. Uh, renew in me a pure heart, a clean spirit. Uh, oh God, help me Lord uh, to get back and pick up the cross. Uh, pick it up where I laid it down. Uh, listen, who told me I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to several somebody you laid your cross down and where you laid it down it's still waiting there for you no one else can carry your cross do you hear me you got to go back and pick it up or you'll be damned you'll lose your soul and you're taking others with you you're taking loved ones you're taking your children you're taking those around you that once looked up to you and admired you I beseech you go back and repent and pick up that cross where you laid it down and allow God to fulfill your destiny and fulfill what he called you and made you to be. It's still waiting where you're at. No one else can carry it across the finish line. Only you can. But you got to go back and pick it up. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to pray. You're either going to take heed or you're going to ignore. You're either going to humble yourself down and cry out to God for this good Friday and realizing, oh God, the price my Savior paid. I ignored it. I allowed it to be just of little value because I didn't understand 
and I lost vision of the real price. Oh my God. And I backslid. I'm lukewarm, half hearted. I've got apathetic. God, please cleanse me. Let this be the greatest Easter Sunday I've ever known because I come back in tune in line with you. This Sunday, I want to go to the house of God, Lord, but I want to go carry my cross. There's been other Easter's I went because I want to, to show off my new outfit. I want to show off my physique. I want to show off my looks. I want to show off what I've gained in this world from possessions. But Lord, I want to repent this, this Easter. I want to go to the house of God and show off my cross. I want to show the cross that I'm bearing for Jesus Christ. Because he said, if I don't bear the cross, I cannot follow you. And if I don't bear the cross, I cannot be a disciple. Oh, my heart is burdened right now for you that laid your crosses down. This message is for you. Time is short. Time is short. Hell is enlarging itself daily. And I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Repent. Go back and pick up the cross. And God will reach down and renew you. He'll renew you. He'll put you back on the potter's wheel. And take that old lump of clay that has been marred. That lump of clay that's got messed up. And he'll refashion it again and make you anew. Put you back on the road to destiny. His power and blessings. Some of you are in misery. Your marriage is in shambles. Your finances is in shambles. Your family structure has been just bombarded and torpedoed by sin and by the enemy and by the world. Yet you would say you don't know what to do. Some of you are carrying such scars such pain and hurts, you got to pick up your cross, come to Jesus, allow him to do the healing. So I'm going to pray right now. I want you to allow the Holy Ghost to have his way. Father, I feel like it's time to stop right now. And so I surrender. Oh. <laughs> I can see that cross. The cross pain and sacrifice, suffering, humiliation, humility, total surrender and obedience, uncaring of what the world analyzes, irregardless of what their estimation is of my cross. Lord, it's what you've chosen for me. The Lord, help them to go and pick it up. They laid it down. Satan couldn't push it down. The world couldn't pull it off his shoulder. You had to lay it down. Oh, Holy Ghost, convict their hearts like my heart is beating right now. Reach through these airwaves, this YouTube, this live stream. My God, and the rest of their hearts. Some of them don't realize if they don't honor now, if they don't move quickly, the cost will be irreversible. That the penalty of their disobedience will be a, one that will not be disregarded or withdrawn. Oh, my heart is beating. I can see faces. I can see faces. God of people that I know in this church under my ministry that have laid down the cross. My God, they need to get back. They need to get back. Father, I pray that the Holy Ghost will bring conviction upon them. I pray the Holy Ghost will rest them and they'll surrender and cry out and go back and pick up the cross. And for that, we give you all the praise and glory and honor. I'm looking for great things this Sunday, Lord, because they went back to the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Come to Sunday school. Come to Sunday morning service. Let's worship the greatest event in the history of humanity. It's your decision. It's your decision if you want to 
honor him or are you ashamed of him? But make a decision. And come and let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name, God bless you.